Hi, my name is Denise Davis Pedri. I'm a Colorado Hearing Resource Coordinator through the Colorado School for the Deaf and Blind, working with families who have children identified with hearing loss ages birth through three in this part of Colorado. Today I'm going to talk about strategies for supporting literacy for families who have chosen a listening and spoken language communication option. As we change slides, I will pause to give those of you viewing this an opportunity to read the slide. The research shows a strong relationship between vocabulary size and reading comprehension level. Children learn new vocabulary only if the words pique their interest. Using books is a way to pique a child's interest so that they build their vocabulary and reach stronger literacy skills. It's essential to recognize that literacy begins at birth. And again, the importance of literacy and its connection to language development. It's also important to not only create a language-rich environment, but a literacy-rich environment. Having books, magazines, and newspapers displayed in a home has been shown to encourage a respect for literacy in children and later higher reading scores. There should be a discussion about the significance of exposing young children to English print and the sound symbol correlation to expand their literacy skills. For those families using a listening and spoken language approach, these aspects have to be in place. A consistent use of appropriate amplification during all waking hours. Creating meaningful auditory input by reducing background noise. And making sure that the speaker is taking advantage of the best distance and acoustics is also important. Selecting what books to read to the child can be random, but also needs to be purposeful. Soft books for those very young children who may be putting everything into their mouth are appropriate, and board books for the age of child who may be prone to tearing pages. Know the child's curiosities and capitalize on them. A child will be much more engaged when the subject is in the child's passion. Pop-up books and books with moving parts capture interests. If you're building vocabulary around action words, choose a book that reflects those concepts. There are books that will focus on animal or vehicle sounds as well as specific phonemes for immersion of those sounds. Using rhythmic emphasis, using nursery rhymes are great for this aspect. Having repetitive phrasing, books such as Brown Bear, Brown Bear captivates children that, with that reoccurring phrase.
Think about different positions for book sharing. Face-to-face -face positioning allows for speech reading opportunities and joint attention, as well as utilizing input to both ears equally. Side-by-side -side positioning focuses on listening opportunities. And sitting the child on your lap in close proximity to the ear also enhances the bonding experience. Here are some of the auditory strategies used in listening and spoken language approach. I thought I'd give some examples of how those strategies can be used during book sharing. I've chosen the book, 10 Minutes Till Bedtime, by Peggy Rathman. But you can use any early childhood book with these ideas. For instance, prompting. In this book, the book has a hamster that uses a megaphone for announcements. You can make a megaphone by rolling up a piece of paper or use a toilet roll as a megaphone. You can take turns calling out parts of the book using the megaphone between you and the child as a prop and that's what will enhance the prompting. The strategy of repetition can be used on the page where um, the tub is being filled and the um, water is coming out of the shower. Drip, 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 drip. We know that children with hearing loss need to hear words way more often than hearing children in order for that to be part of their repertoire. So that's a way of using repetition. An idea for acoustic highlighting is taking a word in a book and maximizing on the one sound. For instance, there's a picture of a hamster on every page in this book, so you can highlight the sound by saying hamster as you go through the book. Exaggerated tone is a wonderful way to teach a child expression. As the father is counting down to bedtime, he uses a louder and louder voice until he's yelling bedtime. It's a great way to practice quiet and loud voice vocal quality. The use of stress is another strategy in auditory skills development. On the page where the little boy hears his father finally yell bedtime now, you can use a strategy such as uh-oh it's bedtime to enhance the stress of, uh-oh, it's bedtime. Auditory space is a strategy of using pause time to encourage the child to fill in the blank. So as you read the book, 10 minutes till bedtime, 9 minutes till bedtime, eight minutes till bedtime, seven minutes till, and pause to encourage the child to fill in the blank. Syllabulation is enhancing the beats of specific words. In this book, I chose a page that has a mouse, a monkey, and a banana. Helping the child hear the beats of mouse, one syllable, monkey, two syllable, banana as a three syllable word. will help them hear the syllabication of words.
The technique of auditory sandwiching I picked in this book on the page where there is a monkey. You can use the sound of ooh, 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 ee, 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 as the sandwiching. So you would point to the picture and say monkey, ooh, 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 ee, 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 monkey, and that sandwiching the label between the sound. Auditory feedback loop is a way of having the child repeat the name of the book and the number each time. So some children would be able, you could do 10 minutes till bedtime and they might be able to say 10. Nine minutes till bedtime, nine. Or they might be able to say 10 minutes. Nine minutes till bedtime, the child may be able to repeat nine minutes until they're able to repeat all four words. It's good to incorporate writing into a pre-literacy philosophy. Children can scribble their own story or you can take the concepts of this book on the last page where he says or close to the last page where he says good night to people that are leaving his room. Have your child write down the things in his room that he would want to say good night to. Good night to Teddy. Good night to the lamp. Good night to the pillow. Good night to the stars. Whatever concepts or uh, vocabulary that's in the room that he could say good night to and then use that as his own 10 minutes till bedtime story. It's also good to incorporate music into your pre-literacy activities. I just picked a picture where the little boy is in the bathtub prior to um, going to bed and you could sing, this is the way we wash our hair, wash our hair, wash our hair. Go through different body parts as you sing that song, um, incorporating the picture in the book. Auditory memory is a difficult strategy, but one that needs to be practiced. Kids love reading the book over and over and over again. Uh, adults often get very tired of that and want to read a different book, but the ability to read the book over and over and over again gives the child an opportunity to retell the story and practice auditory memory, short term and long term. So give your child the book and give them an opportunity to read it to you. And then the last strategy is speech sound sequencing. I picked the picture where the little boy has um, a towel and you can point to all the opportunities in that picture, point to the towel and use rub-a-dub-dub. That's -dub. a great sound sequencing that would be fun for kids to practice. They may start out with saying rubba rubba rubba, rub-a-dub-dub. Pick out any fun little sound sequencing to practice throughout the book. I hope you gain some new ideas and some new insights into reading with your child. I took information from these resources. And I end by saying happy reading. Thank you.